Here we go. Part three of the solution to the dynamic temperature distribution in Erod. Not not uh, not the baseball player, but a uh, uh, a solid piece of material. Well, I guess Erod is pretty solid, so I guess you could maybe uh, do a crude approximation as if a heat transfer through Erod. But uh, anyways, um, here's where we left off. Part two. Now we're part three. We're going to start here. What are C1, C2? Question mark. Well, we can use boundary conditions. Phi at zero equals what sine of zero? Zero. C1 times zero plus cosine of zero? One. C2. So we have C equals zero, of course, the boundary conditions. So C2 equals zero. So this is where the difference uh, origin becomes apparent between doing a, uh, a uh, constant uh, temperature conditions versus a flux or a no flux condition, and that uh, 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 starts to materialize in these constants. So for this example, C2 is equal zero. You have flux conditions, C2 does not equal zero. So phi zero equals C2 equals zero. And then we have phi at one equals zero which equals C1 sine square root lambda. So then this would suggest maybe C1 equals zero. That is a trivial solution. And doesn't really help us get a nice solution to the problem uh, that's actually useful. So C1 equals zero, trivial solution, don't care. So what about what does this tell us? We still can't solve for what C1 is, but this gives us information about what square root lambda might be. If you look at sine as a function, this is a one, this is minus one. Starts out at zero, this is pi, two pi, three pi, da 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 da. Let's do one more, four pi here. Where does it begin? Well, sine begins at zero, it goes positive to a maximum of one at about uh, exactly pi over two, drops back down, minimum three pi over two, zero, two pi, that's supposed to go through the line there, and this is what sine, the sine function looks like on this interval. You know, it doesn't look that wavy, of course, using a pen to uh, to draw this, but this is generally what it looks like. So every multiple of pi well, let me write out the Greek symbol pi satisfies 0 equals c1 sine square root lambda. So this is good. This allows us to find a non-trivial solution to the heat transfer problem using separation of variables. So what is the solution? So what this means is that square root lambda must equal n pi or lambda equals n pi squared for n equals 1, 2, 3, da, da, da. Each one of these is a solution to the modulus problem for the spatial component. Now, to get the total solution, we just remultiply it back together with h. So the, 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 the solution we started with, when we separated the variables, theta is a function of psi comma tau equals phi, which is a function of psi, h is a function of tau, the product of those, theta, now, for one solution for theta, psi comma tau equals some new constant, b. We're just going to multiply them together into a new constant. It almost looks like a beta. It could be either way. Whatever floats your boat. e to the minus lambda tau sine square root lambda psi. So, we're getting there. This looks uh, promising. Where square root lambda satisfies the above equation. When we substitute this in, we have theta, function of psi comma tau, equals b 
beta minus n pi squared tau sine n pi psi n equals 1, 2, so on and so forth on every number, every multiple of pi. But what n do we choose? Well, every n satisfies the equation. Every, every possible choice of n interval satisfies the heat equation. So because it's a linear system, it can also be shown that a sum of all of these different choices for n's with different bn's also satisfies the solution. So we can rewrite the general solution, phi, that's supposed to be a psi, don't really know how to write it, comma, tau, just kidding, with well, sum n equals one to some number, this approximation gets better and better uh, as your number up on top increases, b n sine n pi psi e minus n pi squared tau. I don't like that psi. You redraw that psi. That's better. So now the question is, what are the bn values? Oh, bummer. What are the bn values? Well, is there any information we haven't used yet? Yes. We haven't used the initial conditions. So if we use the initial conditions, we can solve for what the bn are. So put simply, tau equals zero, we have to find the bn values so that our initial condition, f of psi equals sum, n equals one, we'll make m infinity, that's a pretty big number, bn sine n, oh, that's a pi, oh, pi, oh, two pi's, pi times n psi. So how do we solve this problem? What's very helpful to solve this problem is something called orthogonality. And what we can do is use the orthogonality of these uh, individual fees, the eigen functions, uh, uh, to our advantage. It makes the solution of the bn values uh, very straightforward. How do, what do I mean by orthogonality? Well, here's the trick. First, multiply both sides of this equation by sine m pi psi. Well, this will be f of psi times this, times sum n equals 1 to infinity b n sine n pi psi sine m pi. Psi. So there's the uh, equation we start with. Now, what is what? What do we go from here? Well, next step is to integrate both of these functions, and the goal is to make this part disappear. Isn't it great when things in mathematics just disappear? You go, Poof! It's gone. Things that look complicated like this. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we integrate both sides over psi, integral 0 to 1, f of psi, sine m pi psi equals sum n equals 1 to infinity of b n integral 0 to 1 sine n pi psi sine m pi, pi m pi psi d psi on both of these of course d psi that doesn't get cut off what's the integral what is this equal is there integral from 0 to 1 of sine n pi psi sine 
m pi psi d psi equals zero or one half. It equals zero when m is not equal to n. So this is when whenever the uh, functions are orthogonal, or if they're the same, when m equals n, the integral equals a half. Now, this allows many, many things to just disappear, and we can replace the integral term here with either a zero or one half. And what you end up with then is that the BM values in general, because now M equals N, we say BM instead of BN, equals the equals zero to one of this term, not this term, this term divided by the integral of this term. Zero to one F of psi sine M pi psi d psi divided by integral 0 to 1 sine squared m pi psi d psi and this equals 2 because it's divided by 1 half for this term on the bottom integral 0 to 1 f of psi sine m pi psi d psi. And in this problem, for our example, uh, f of psi equals 1, and so then b m equals 2, integral 0 to 1, sine m pi psi d psi. And our final solution in terms of our dimensionless variables for this problem is theta, function of psi, comma tau, equals sum m equals 1 to infinity and beyond bm sine m pi psi exp minus m pi squared tau. There is our beautiful solution to dynamic heat transfer through a rod. Not Alex Rodriguez, a rod of solid material.